Hi students, in this lecture, I will explain transform domain approach to obtain the output of a given convolutional encoder. From signals and systems, we are familiar with this concept. Convolution in time domain will be equivalent to multiplication in spectral or frequency domain. We use this formula this principle to obtain the output of the encoder in transform domain approach. We have two approaches to find the code words or output of the encoder. One is the time domain approach and uh, other is transform domain approach. Code words obtained using both domains produces same result. Not only these two domains even the code words obtained from graphical representations like tree diagram, trellis diagram, and uh, um, uh, trellis poetry diagrams will be the same. It will produce uh, same uh, output results. Suppose let us consider 212 convolutional encoder. It has two outputs and uh, the first generator function. So this first generator function is uh, connected to first stage, uh, all the st stages of the encoder. So this will be one, this will be one, this will be one. The coefficients are tap gains. So this will be one, one, one. So say second one, this is one, this is zero, this is one. The second generator is connected to uh, only first stage and the second stage of the as the last stage of the encoder. So here G1 and G2, here G1 and G2, they are known as generator sequences of the convolutional encoder. These generator sequences are also known as impulse responses, impulse responses of the encoder. So here 101, 1 means there is a connection and 0 means the corresponding flip-flap is not connected to the function generator. Function generator means modulo to uh, adder. We try to solve this problem by using the transform domain approach. Below figure depicts red half convolutional constraint length 1 convolutional encoder. Find the encoder output using transform domain approach for the given input sequence 11101. So, this is the constraint length of 1. So the first flip-flap will be MSG and the second flip-flap represents the state of the encoder. In transform domain approach, both the message input messages and the generator of polynomials. So uh, generator sequences are expressed in terms of uh, polynomial equations. Suppose for the input to 11101, the message polynomial can be written like this. So the coefficients d power 0, this is d power 1, and so on. We write in terms of the message polynomial in this way. And also we express the generator sequences g1 general uh, equation for the generator sequence will be shown here. Here M is the state of the encoder. G1, G2, G3, uh, this, uh, these are the coefficients of the polynomial G1 and uh, these coefficients may be either 1 or 0. These generator sequences are also known as impulse response of the convolutional encoder. So from the given diagram, this is connected to the output and uh, this M1 is not connected to the output of the this uh, generator polynomial. So this will be 1 and this will be 0. So that is why the impulse response or generator sequence is given as 1, 0. And uh, G2, both the flip-flaps or both stages of the shift register are connected to modulo 2 adder. So this will be 1 and this will be 1. So this will be 1, 1, 1. These two generator sequences we express in terms of the polynomial representation. This way G1 of D, 
general equation is uh, like this and uh, we obtain um, by multiplying with the coefficients d0 d1 etc here d is the delay variable so for output one we get the generator polynomial g1 and for output two also we get the generator polynomial g2 of t 1 plus t so here d is the unit delay variable and uh, generally uh, variable d is used for convolutional ports and uh, x uh, used for cyclic ports after uh, finding the polynomials we will find the polynomials for uh, first output so we know from block codes x is equal to mg m is the message signal and g is the generator matrix so similarly we can also find uh, we can apply the same uh, formula to find the polynomial expression for the output one of the encoder we multiply message polynomial and generator sequence of the first uh, output so we can express we obtain 1 plus d plus d square plus d to the power of 4 and we expand into d power 0 d power 1 notation so this coefficient so 1 1 1 0 1 we represent to here similarly we find the polynomial for the output second output using the same multiplication m of d we multiply message polynomial with the generator sequence of the second output so finally we get uh, 1 plus d plus d cube we will represent into some standard form and uh, we take the coefficients 1 0 0 1 like this so here finally multiplexing two output sequences this output sequence and uh, this output sequence this is x1 x2 we take 1 1 this is the output of the encoder for input 1 this is the next for next uh, input bit this is the output we combine x1 x2 to get the encoder output this answer is same as we got in time domain approach or graphical representations like tree diagram state diagram or trellis diagram the message sequence of length m is equal to 5 bits produces encoded bits of length uh, n times m plus l minus n here n is the encoder output m is the message bits l is the constraint length in our example constraint length is 1 so we get uh, 10 bits so for the shift register to be restored to its initial state that is 0 all 0 initial state a terminating sequence of uh, l minus 1 0 c is uh, appended even after uh, processing the uh, input to sequence if any input to bits are remaining here we have to append zeros so the number of zeros we append will be equal to constant length minus one the terminating zeros is called tail of the message if you want pdf files of my video lectures please visit www.engineerstutor.com for a pdf link see description of the video you can also write to me at rkgopal2020 at the rate of gmail.com for any doubts and queries